Welcome everybody to the Dream Builders podcast. I am super excited for the upcoming interview. Today, our guest is none other than Sudanya Malek. Sudanya is a corporate coach, a speaker, a data architect, author, and an artist. And I'm super excited to talk with her about her passions, data analytics, emotional intelligence, how to become more self-aware, and also about the release of her first poetry book, Nox From My Soul. Sudanya, welcome to the Dream Builders podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joachim. I am super excited and uh, uh, looking forward to this uh, talk. And thank you for having me in Dream Builders. And uh, uh, I am really, really excited to share my story and also hear your our conversations and stuff. So thank you so much. And um, thanks for the wonderful intro. I, it's, it's kind of pampering and flattering to hear all these words uh, from somebody else. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no, no worries. Uh, it's my pleasure. And I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you and can't wait to, to know more about your story. And uh, I think our story goes back to, what is it, Amsterdam, December 2019, right? It's like half yes. a year ago or so. We met in an awesome event. And I remember talking to you about, uh, about your job, about emotional intelligence as well, your passions, but also about writing that book that you were finishing it up. And I was like, yeah, give me a heads up whenever you are ready. Then half a year later, you were ready and I got super excited. Um, and now I'm launching my own podcast as well. So it's almost like a synchronicity that we are here talking right now. And before we talk about your book, I would really like to know more about, uh, about you, Sudanya, because you now live in the Netherlands. Yes. But take us back to, to the beginning when you were still a little kid and you are actually from India, right? A small yes. town in the eastern part of India. Tell yes. us more about how you grew up and your transformational journey. I would love to know more about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a quite long journey uh, and a lot to do still. Um, but it started long back, like uh, 32 years back <laughs> in uh, India. Yeah, I belong to a very small uh, township. Uh, the name of the township is called Durgapur, and it's in the east of India. And it's a steel township. Uh, and uh, my parents, like my dad, he is an electrical engineer. And so goes like my whole dynasty is actually engineers. So my grandparents, uh, like my grandfathers, one is a mechanical engineer, another is a chemical engineer. My uncles, like maternal uncles, they are like PhD in physics and like agricultural engineer. My father, as I mentioned, electrical engineer. So I was destined to be an engineer because that's how it happened in, uh, in, in a middle class uh, uh, like uh, family in India. So the rules to be successful as per the society is only two choices. So you are either an engineer or a doctor. So these are the only two choices in the middle class family. And uh, I, I, had, I already, it was this time. So because of my family history and stuff like that, so in my it's actually it's a steel township. So it actually hosts one of the biggest plants, steel plants of India, uh, Sale Steel Authority of India Limited, and my father was working there. Uh, and my growing up was actually very cosmopolitan uh, because of, of of the township where I grew up. So you can imagine like, because it's a very big steel township, like there were people who were like coming from all over, just not India, but also from outside India. So we had uh, like, say you had Russian collaboration. So we had people from Russia, uh, we had people from all around India. And if you know about India, we, have, we are actually quite, um, we have different states and every state has its own language, culture and their own way of living. So. Uh, most of my friends, I did not share the same uh, mother language with them, uh, but still they were friends. And that's how I was already very used to a uh, very multicultural, multilingual grow up, growing up. Mm. And um, I think that that's, that's very integral to my personality and my character and why I am so much uh, 
into traveling and uh, like how I made it to Netherlands. So that's one of the key things I would say. Uh, like one of my key, uh, like I would say blessings mm -hmm. uh, growing up in that kind of environment. Uh, but as I mentioned that I had no choice but to be an engineer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I had to go to an engineering college. I did my computer science engineering. And uh, since then, one of my dream was to travel a lot. So I didn't care if I am an engineer or a doctor or blah, blah, blah. I wanted to be a happy person. I wanted to travel around the world. I wanted to explore. Uh, thanks to my parents since childhood, they, they have been traveling a lot all around India. And now when I wanted to like make it on my own, I wanted to travel the world on my own. So um, I started uh, working in IT. 13 years back now, uh, I like started working in data where I am uh, so uh, And um, I always wanted to do projects outside uh, the country so that I can explore more of other cultures. That was my passion also to travel. Mm. Still it is. And um, I started my career uh, in Singapore. I worked one year there and then actually it all started. I started working in other different countries. I lived in uh, Ghana for one year uh, in Africa. Okay. I, in 2010, I, yeah, I lived there for one year. It was a very wonderful experience for me. I also uh, lived uh, like in Europe, I came first time in 2010 uh, in Germany, and uh, I, and because of my work style and I had to really interact with the business and also uh, talk to the business, talk to the technical team, and that had become my actually I discovered that that is my also my communication and being able to talk to the business and also the technical team. It was my one of my key strengths. Um, and I also loved enjoying talking and explaining and understanding and uh, people perspectives, cultures, language. Uh, it, it really it, it made me really, uh, the person who I am and I'm very, very thankful to my job uh, style for that. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it so happened that uh, almost six years back, um, I came to the Netherlands uh, for one of such projects and I was working here for one year when I realized that, hey, like I now is the time in my life to take the next step. I would like to have more uh, a base, have a stable, consistent social life and a personal life and uh, also travel a bit lesser because I, I was like living in one country one year and the other country in another, another year in another whole country, like another part of the world. And I really loved it. Uh, but then uh, six years back, I decided that now I really want to reduce that. I would still like to travel, but I want to have a consistent base. Mm -hmm. And it was during that time that Netherlands happened and it was like a perfect choice for me to uh, choose this place as my um, uh, like my base location uh, because for me it was very important to have uh, work and life balance so work life is also life uh, but I also wanted to uh, have a uh, like a personal life also social life and also wanted to focus on that because that was something that I was uh, quite behind a bit because of uh, being quite a workaholic and that led me to actually uh, some serious close to burnout. I'm going to talk about it a bit more in detail, but I'm going to first say how I landed up here in Netherlands and why I love Netherlands a lot. Uh, it's because of the work culture where it's quite balanced. People only work for eight hours focused and then it's, you forget it. Uh, which is quite different from Asian or American cultures. Um, it's a bit opposite also in the African culture as well. So it seemed to perfectly balance what I wanted in my life during that time and also now. Mm. Uh, to focus on other aspects of my life other than 
passion uh, because I was like, okay, by that time I had really good confidence and skills skills had developed. And I really felt that it is important that I focus on other parts. And that's why I chose to be here in Netherlands. And since then it's been already six years. Um, and I still am loving it here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> like sometimes, you know, uh, like the weather, like, uh, yeah, I have become like a, I have some Dutchy tendencies to complain about the weather. But now you can't complain. It's so sunny, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. I, I can imagine. the sun here. <laughs> I can imagine that's why I moved out to Portugal, right? As a Dutch guy. <laughs> <laughs> Get some more sunshine, but the summers are, are sometimes good, so. Yeah, sometimes good, and especially during this lockdown, I feel like we had a phenomenal um, weather here in Netherlands. Like, it was never like this. Like, so much of sun, so much of blue sky. So, in a way, like, yeah, it's a, it's a good time, uh, like, weather-wise. Mm. Tell me about your... Um... You know, from that journey, basically, of traveling the world and, and, and working in all these kind of different places around the world, being in touch with, with different cultures, what was your, your, your biggest takeaway from that, from that experience? I would love to know more about that. Yeah, um, actually, traveling helped me a lot, and especially seeing, uh, like, a culture which is totally opposite from the culture where I belong from. And that made me realize that, uh, like, there is nothing called as the absolute truth in life. Uh, it really made me realize some of the beliefs that it made me appreciate my country even more, but it also made me look at my country or my culture or the beliefs that I come from also in a skeptical and a more critical way. Mm. And also made me uh, realize that to be smart, you need to pick the, you know, the, good parts of all the cultures and move on. So actually I feel like a lot of my uh, like uh, current beliefs or my openness is because I was exposed to different cultures and I was uh, I also was wanting to learn so in every country I have my best friend uh, who would uh, and I'm a big time foodie, so that's another great way for me to actually uh, uh, mingle with the culture and uh, know the culture as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would always go with the local and taste the local food, go to like local places and explore. But that has been always been my passion. And uh, that's how I realized that, okay, there is like, the world is so beautiful. It has so many varieties and everything needs to be cherished. So Absolutely. I feel like I have, I'm so lucky in a way that I, I can cherish East and West and uh, bring out the best of both in me. So I, I love to wear the traditional clothes in India, but here I love to wear jeans, skirt and dresses, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, yeah, I, that's what you learn in traveling. Like to, and it's just not traveling. Like I just did not go and uh, for a few days or one week or I lived in countries. So I had to spend one year in countries, and I had to like also adjust with their way of living, with their way of communication. And some stories are really, really shocking and funny, and it, I got culture shock. Uh, as well many times like the first European like when I came to Europe for the first time it's like the most hilarious story tell me <laughs> like, like I, I, uh, I'll tell you that story because it's so funny um, when I came first time to, to on in 2010 to Dusseldorf for uh, one of my projects um, it was Sunday and I did not know that on Sunday, everything is closed in Europe. Now I know it pretty well in many uh, places, uh, it is closed. But I felt when I landed, it was, it felt like a curfew, like nothing is moving. <laughs> <laughs> like, have I come to the right place? 
or whatever like like is something wrong is there some war or something going or is there something because, yeah sunday is the most crowded place to go outside in the market or in the streets <laughs> because all the business is booming and people are like it's like a fair it's like a market and okay that was okay fine but when i i i i went to my uh, hotel i found it weird that there are only one or two people working in the whole hotel one is the receptionist and another is like somebody helping you and i was like oh like hey like yeah this is like a bit weird like in india we are used to 10 people helping us and picking your luggage and just uh, the hospitality is like totally different so i was like okay okay no worries it's a different country i am open to change blah 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 and then i went to my room and i opened the window and in front of my of the window there were the it was in the middle of a, a like a street and the other side of the street there was a sex shop and i started crying looking at it <laughs> i was crying and i was like oh my god i must be in the wrong place it must be some red light district it's like i knew something is wrong with this place <laughs> and i was like this is not normal like everything is closed why is this shop open why are these lights blinging and you must like i did not even call my parents i first called my hr of my company and i called them and told them you have to be like a really crappy place like i don't know what kind of hotel you have booked but it is i can't tell you in details but this is like not acceptable can you change it like tomorrow <laughs> and then i i next day in the morning i was going to my office and i realized oh there are sex shops every 200 meters it's like it's a, there is a shop just next to my office also like oh this is normal maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah puts really things really in perspective right <laughs> and then i call my hr like oh no actually the hotel that you have given it's one of the in the prime locations it's really good it's just that i was not aware of it <laughs> so so but but like uh those are like fun memories to have right it's the beauty of traveling as well and getting new experiences in in, in all the things that you do so yeah. that's, that's really really cool and thanks for sharing that <laughs> yeah. and uh I would love to know more about um, about you because you're also working now and you're doing a lot of um, different things. So you are you are in data analytics. I know that you are doing workshops as well as a corporate coach in emotional intelligence, and you're writing your book. And I would love to know more about emotional intelligence uh, in general and how you basically balance your own energy because it's so important nowadays to to feel that balance and especially when you're pursuing all these other activities outside your, your normal job. I find it incredible what you do, but how do you balance that creative energy in you? Okay, I think it's a very good question, but before I have to tell the next part of my whole transformation journey to explain this, because if you had asked me this question like around uh, six, seven, eight years back, I would like, oh, this is mission impossible. I can do so many things. <laughs> this is like no no i like for me i have to just focus on being a data analytics specialist this is what i can do and nothing else and that too also was very much burdensome because oh my god making a project and talking to so many clients it always felt like a burden and uh, six to seven years back uh, i kind of went into a really big transformation i would say uh like depending on like ha how i was i was very much into my work i was very workaholic i gained all my pleasure from work and that was also my social personal and whatever life but somewhere i started feeling uh, like not so happy because for me i wanted to be happy that was one goal that was i was very clear since my childhood and my parents and the society told like okay check great job education uh, become a computer science engineer travel uh, get a house get a car and i did check 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 like that's what everybody told me and now i should be happy mm. um 
but to my surprise i discovered that i'm not happy i'm just superficially happy and i'm just feeding my ego by doing all these cool stuff and being in board meetings and like you know talking to people and like convincing them and like uh yeah whatever it felt like it's like very superficial happiness and that hollow feeling got stronger and stronger and it started disturbing my disturbing my work itself so i started feeling brain foggy i started feeling defocused at work i could not focus or concentrate and that also at home i could not like take care of my home like regularly cleaning the home or like meeting my friends i stopped socializing also and that brought me to the worst darkest and the most transformative times of my life actually so i went into like a full time depression um and uh it was so terrible that i was like first time in my life i i was like praying from deep my heart like i was like i I I I am personally like I told you like my family is pretty like logical and not very science focused and we had no such uh like uh, religious uh like uh, uh dogmas or like yeah I come from a, a, a like a, a religious family but the, it was never like you have to follow a religion or rituals or stuff like that so I was always like kind of yeah science is my religion a mm. uh, kind of a person uh, always logical and critical and like uh, driven by all these emotion had no place so it's for weak people that's what i thought and um but whatever the feeling was so bad during the depression that i first time i prayed uh really deep and i asked like if there is anything like higher intelligence god universe whatever you are mm. if you help me and if you help me to get out of this situation i am going to serve you rest of my life i'm going to help you rest of my life just just tell me i can't i can't handle this i can't handle this and uh from there i started seeing a big change in me um and it it just happened that uh after after all these realizations and like tons and tons of crying and all the time feeling unhappy sad uh lethargic um i was suddenly one day attracted to uh i was just googling and surfing and just doing some random youtube stuff and suddenly i saw this video of a mystic from india yeah and he was just talking about some random thing but i that i remember that moment so profoundly that i had this epiphany from inside like a calling that listen to this guy this guy is going to change your life and i, I and and i knew that it's like a knowing it's like it's not it's beyond trust it was like it's a knowing like yeah this guy is going to help me and his name is sadguru he's a very popular uh, i think you know him <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's a very popular yogi mystic and like a cool uh, guru in india but i knew about him like 5 years back um and um he i i started listening to him for a week and he inspired me to do meditation so that was the key take away i had from him mm. that i need to do meditation now i can't focus like in a chair for 5 minutes like meditation was like okay let me give it a try so i started with 1 minute a day like while i was in the bus or in a public transport or in the train i tried to close my eyes for 1 minute and i tried to uh like uh focus on what i was thinking and that slowly 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 changed to 5 minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes and i think in a matter of just 3 4 months i saw a profound change in my energy 
I felt like, oh, I can, I can just do anything. I wanted to uh, uh, be even be more active at work. But apart from that, I suddenly found my lost interest for dance. I started um, vlogging. So I did YouTube. Uh, I, I did regular YouTubing for one year. Oh, wow. uh, back in 20, yeah, 2017, every week I used to shoot and I had all the energy. I used to write and that's when I started also this whole thing of writing started. It, ha it started naturally. I felt the urge to release my emotions or the deep down feelings through words. And I started just randomly writing, not for anybody, just for myself. I started expressing my feelings and many of them were quite painful and dark and I, I never wanted to share all those things. But I started writing and it started making me feel better and better and better and better and better, and better until uh, last year I had this another strong epiphany and this strong calling like, hey, you need to collect all these things and you need to publish it. You need to inspire people to be more expressive mm -hmm. uh, because the world needs that. The world needs to release their deep down emotions and uh, deep down feelings. And it's, it's, for, it's for the well-being, the mental well-being, physical well-being, overall well-being. And that's how actually I dared even to even share these uh, poems. In, in, in public forums. So when we met actually like last year, December, it's just until like one month before in November, I just read uh, one of the poems uh, in, in actually the same event. And that inspired me to actually publish the book. Mm -hmm. uh, because till before till then, I never felt uh, comfortable sharing my poems because they are so vulnerable and so deep. Uh, like just reading out out loud alone i would start crying it was so uh like so intimate and so sentimental thing for me mm. uh but i remembered the promise i had given uh, <laughs> five years back like i have to do everything that is feasible uh to make me feel really, really happy. I'm not saying that I can't be more happy. I always feel like you can always be a better person. You can always uh, do more things. But what I was like five years back, just a normal uh, data analytics consultant who was just working uh, and delivering projects to today, I just don't even work in projects. Uh, I lead a team. At the same time, I also teach data analytics, data modeling, really technical uh, stuff in the academy. And at the same time, I took uh, the courage, I would say, and the dare to actually teach emotional intelligence in corporate environment. Wow. So that was also <laughs> one of the, uh, like I would say challenge, but I also had the dare to do it uh, because of the knowing because of the feeling that the clarity that I had because of doing all these things, because of meditation, I started uh, also traveling and um, in a more conscious way, thinking in a much conscious way, uh, like the kind of people I'm meeting, the kind of uh, things I'm saying to myself and to others, uh, the way I'm letting others treat me, all these awareness like have really profoundly shifted my life standards and I felt like this is really important to inculcate in you know regular education and unfortunately we don't have it we have the mainstream educations where you are told to like be a professional and earn money and have a kids and family and that's the like you know the definition of having successful life yeah. but it's not uh, self-fulfilling and that's mm -hmm. what I was looking for and um, I can do much more uh, it, it takes much more energy but I have also a lot more energy to give and it gives me immense joy to actually uh, explore my artistic side to explore my creative side and at the same time I still love giving data analytics presentation in front of my clients I love it 
I love that. I love the fact that you were talking about all these you know, methods or techniques that you use to become more self-aware, like meditation um, and, all the, and the emotional intelligence that you were talking about. Um, are there any other, let's say, techniques or tools that you have used that really pulled you out from that situation that you just described where you were almost burned out and, uh, and depressed? that really helped you and, and you're also now teaching because that's a very cool thing that you do. You're not just like learning from it, but you're also applying it and, and teaching it to others. So are there any particular tools that you think can, can be beneficial for other people in those kind of situations? Yeah, there are actually many. Uh, I would say meditation is the most fundamental. That's why I'm mentioning about it. But apart from meditation, also there are some, you know, the practical tips. I'm a very scientific person, so I always need to have a practical explanation that okay why are these things working why is like being consciousness and awareness and like prayer or like believing in higher intelligence why is this working in the brain uh how it is uh like uh so i did a lot of research on this topic and that's how i like uh i i actually committed to lifelong personal development and that's how we met also through a personal development event mm. And uh, I know you also go to a lot of personal development events and uh, that's, uh, that's the hunger that we have to learn more about ourselves and also be inspired by such kind of people. So, uh, so I would say one of the things is to uh, like, uh, like uh, always be into any book or course or uh, be around somebody who is into personal development that always helps because that helps you with the inspiration. That's the first, you know, kick that you need to be mm. inspired to do these kind of things. That's something that it's an internal bell and nobody can push you to do all these things. So being around such kind of people always helps. Reading inspirational books always helps. Uh, like listening to real transformative stories. So what you are doing is actually help, like bringing uh, actually people who are just common like you and me and bringing their transformational stories. And I think that's one of the best ways to be inspired uh, and to kick that inner uh, consciousness button, like how to be more conscious. Mm. And there's always, I'm not saying that I am the most conscious person because I know that there is always something to be improved on. So it's a constant learning. Although I'm teaching, it's also the best way of learning, I feel. And since I have committed myself, like I am going to not feel better, I'll ensure that others also feel better. <laughs> so, so that's why I teach, but also it's for myself. Um, so that's one of the things. And another, I would say during those uh, uh, the first few days, like the first few months, what really helped me also to push myself into physical exercise. Oh. So that's another thing which I would really, it's so underestimated uh, when it comes to mental health and also spiritual evolution movement, just movement of the body hmm. can be also really, really impactful. What kind of physical exercises do you do? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, like, a uh, course of years, I have tried many things. And let me give you a background. I have never been a sporty person all my life. I hated sports. Okay. In school, I would never even try to, like, running, for, forget it. Like, I, I like, even walking was a sport for me. <laughs> <laughs> really, Sinaya, really. <laughs> so I have been, I, I have been quite unhealthy. Uh, just not myself, I would uh, actually blame a bit on the culture also <laughs> that uh, we are not the most uh, heaviest when it comes to movement. Although we have uh, like, in, like yoga originates from India, but trust me, I never learned yoga in India. I learned yoga and meditation here in Amsterdam paying in euros. <laughs> 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 so it's like you always undervalue your homegrown stuff, right? So exactly, I paid a lot of money to actually uh, help myself to get out of this burnout, uh, learning my homegrown skills, which I could have gotten for free. 
So, um, so yeah, I, I have never been a very sporty person, but when I really discovered that, uh, that something I really liked was swimming, like as a recreation, that as a kid also I loved it. I realized, it was also a realization during this when I realized that I need to meditate, that just by going to a half an hour swimming, it just made my mood so such a huge difference. Like I was feeling here and suddenly I felt here. And it was a really big uh, revelation for me suddenly. Yeah. Like, like just by doing moving for 15 minutes, I could feel from here to here. And from that time, I really started like going to like a bit more into gym and started working on endurance by like doing treadmills and like light weights and stuff like that. And now I am, I can say that I'm quite addicted to it. So I do running, I do boot camps uh, <laughs> and um, I like uh, Zumba, I like spinning. And of course, when you're in Netherlands, you have, I have two cycles here. It is called bikes. Yeah, right. okay. <laughs> so I, I go for long uh, cycle rides uh, in the nature and like uh, like and also like this uh, like this country is so much infrastructurally so well equipped to move and also people also like uh, they everybody's into physical movement but for me uh, it's I, I have felt like it's more for my mind that I do. And that makes me feel like, yeah, it's a very, very important component for uh, personal development as well. Cool. Amazing. Amazing that you do all these things. And I asked you also earlier about, um, because you do all this, you know, you have your job, you, you do workshops, you're even organizing events and so on as well. So you wrote a book. How do you balance that, that creative energy that you have within you? Because you now mentioned a couple of self-awareness methods. But how is it able to have, let's say, constant high energy or um, how can we maintain high emotional energy levels yeah. so that we can um, really, you know, live from our true potential? Yeah. One of the key things is like to really realize that there will be ups and downs. So we, as long as we accept that and try to be as have this goal that I want to be as much high as possible but then I will there will be times where I'll go down but when I'm going down I should I should be aware and again go up so this awareness actually comes through like having some habits so like what I said that like daily meditation or daily physical exercise these are like the basic like this is like as like like how you brush and take shower every day it's like nobody thinks like it's like a extra burden or an extra work. It's like default for me. Also, it, it, I think this is like the bare minimum. But at the same time, um, being it's just not during those 20 minutes of meditation or those 15 minutes of uh, or 30 minutes of running that you need to that actually works. Uh, on your emotional energy. It's also how you lead the rest of the day. So being aware of what is going on in this between the two years. So that's something a constant exercise. Mm. That's a constant exercise because by society norms, we have been either taught to be numb, especially working in corporates. You have to be always like, you know, be smiling in front of your customer and you have to be always be very courteous and inside you feel something else. You hate the person, but the society told you like, okay, always be smiling and courteous to everybody whom you meet. Mm. And, and that's how we actually numb our emotions. We just don't let ourselves express what we really feel, not to others. I'm not saying that if you wait, you start like uh, fighting with that person, but being aware of that, that why am I feeling certain feeling or am I feeling good or bad? So, some people these days, when you say that, how are you? They always say good or they have a, a standard answer, not bad. <laughs> in, in a, yeah, British, that's the British way, like not bad. Yeah. That's the way of saying good. Uh, but do you really know how you feel all the time? And the kind of words that you say, not bad, good, blah, blah, blah. Are you even feeling what you're saying? Or are you even aware that how you feel and your words 
uh, how, how they come out? Are you aware to correlate them? That's a very important exercise of self-awareness. So when I talk about uh, emotional intelligence, there are actually four pillars in emotional intelligence. And one of the first pillar is self-awareness. And that's where I totally work on. Like mm -hmm. all my exercises, workshops, talks, um, even the book, it's all about self-awareness. To know how am I feeling? Then there are these three pillars where it's about uh, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. So these three are actually, for me, are secondary. What's happening inside you is the most important part of emotional intelligence. And if once you are able to, you know, practice that, the rest will come automatically. You don't need to, I don't need to teach you that, all those things. Mm -hmm. But this constant awareness, like what's going inside you and being closer in terms of your how you're seeing it so so that like because if you say something and if you feel something uh and what you feel something it's so subtle that it goes inside and it's no more visible you don't even know how do you feel after some time yeah. so you have to always watch your words not because you have to hurt somebody it's like how you feel you have to be true to your voice uh in terms of how you feel and always try to like keep it as close as possible as close as possible i know it's very difficult but keep it as close. <laughs> i love what you did, just said you have to be true to your own voice i think that yeah. that's very cool and uh that also brings me to your book because i think that is also very much part of the whole fundament of the book basically knocks from my soul and it says like 111 empowering poems to invoke your inner Shakti. And maybe it's cool to start as well to, because Shakti, what does it actually mean? I think so, it, it's cool to explain that and where it's coming from, because that gives a lot of um, layers and fundaments to what you are doing. Uh, yeah. Keep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Shakti is not a, uh, it's not a English word, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> I have used a Hindi word, which actually comes from the yogic and the Hindu philosophies. And Shakti in uh, Hindi means power, inner power. And uh, and I have to give a pre-context, like how in Hindu, in the yogic and the Hindu philosophy, how Shakti works is uh, in 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 where I come from in Bengal, we actually worship goddess of power. She's called Durga, and we worship her. But we also know that there is a counterpart of her, which is Shiva, which is the, actually, if you say in English terms, it's the masculine power. So there we say it, it, it is same to nothingness uh, or space or awareness. There is no movement, but it's just there. It's, it's just nothing, like the space, because we know that space is just nothing. And that's where the earth is, that's where the universe is, and it's all moving. But anything that is moving, anything that has like, uh, like the weather or like uh, art, these are more uh, linked to feminine qualities. Mm -hmm. and that's what my book is all about, actually, to invoke your feminine energy, to invoke your inner that power. Because emotions is also something which is, related to your feminine energy and that's where we need to balance it out by invoking i don't mean that you should suppress your masculine energy and that's why i all my book pages are black in color because i want to remind you by the color black that masculine it stands for masculinity in the yogic traditions uh, in chinese it's actually opposite the yin and yang so it's the same concept as yin and yang. So by masculine, I say it's like it's depicted by black because that's how, how like Shiva stands for. And the other is color, movement, anything. And that is feminine. And creativity can only exist in space. In nothingness, only something can exist. And I want to like balance out these fundas, not suppress one to get another up to bring the balance in between masculine and feminine. And that's what this whole book is about, to um, get out your emotions out, but also in a balance of your analytical side. 
um, imbalance of your masculine side to actually respect them. Um, and again, since I am a very science focused person, which is again, uh, analytical and a masculine energy, <laughs> although being a work of art is actually a very science driven book. <laughs> Because, um, uh, and I have mentioned here in the context, uh, and I always ask my readers to first read the context of the book and then only read the book. There are 111 poems indeed, but the poems are actually arranged in a very, very scientific way. Um, every poem is actually a snapshot of an emotion. But how I have actually organized it is that it moves from a low feeling vibe emotion to a high feeling vibe and this is totally based on a, on a work by uh abraham hicks i don't know uh, if you know her uh, uh, yeah 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 i know abraham hicks yeah so she like all this she like uh, people who know esther hicks and uh, abraham hicks they will understand why he refer as she so uh, uh her uh, her like just like Sadhguru, Abraham Hicks is also somebody who actually uh, was one of my uh, key uh, like uh, persons who inspired me like mm -hmm. for my transformation mm -hmm. and uh, she in one of her books she spoke about this uh, emotional guidance system where uh, they there where she mentioned about all the ranges of emotion 22 levels and how the how to go from the lower emotional level to a higher emotional level and it is always step by step it's not like from uh feeling um depressed you can suddenly feel uh super optimistic you have to go through anger you have to go through optimism you have to go through hope and there you slowly go it that's like the more uh sustainable way to always go up and down go up and down and that's why what I did is that um, I arranged all the poems from a low feeling vibe, which will slowly, when you really read and move in, it will slowly move you to a high feeling vibe, which is the ultimate feeling of feeling very high is empowerment. Like you really feel like I can do whatever I want. Like that's the feeling that you want, right? All the time. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't feel it, yeah. but this book will actually help you do that. <laughs> And another important part of this book is also the pictures. Now I work with data and another important part of business intelligence is the visualization. So we need to ensure not only the data is of good quality, but uh, the data um, is intuitive. The how it is represented uh, to the CEOs or the CXOs, it should help the uh, CXO to make a really useful decision for the company. And that's how I also learned the power of visualization, how representing an information in the right way can deeply impact the decision making and in fact, right decision making. Um, and saying all that, um, I, I know how important visualization is as a tool for mind, how uh, creative visualization can help to actually get deeper some of the beliefs that you want to, you know, replace. Hmm. Because we are intellectually aware that I shouldn't believe in, uh, like I should, I, 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 for example, racism, which is the current uh, topic. Um, we, we all know, we intellectually all know that we should not discriminate based on racism. Uh, but deep down, based on whatever ancestral or whatever history that we have, deep down we do discriminate, including me. Because it's it's not like I'm the reason, but it's in our past history. It's in our, you know, the blood, the genes. We have memories for seven generations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, to, how do you replace that? And visualization is one of the very powerful mind tools uh, that is used. So what I want my readers is also to just not read the poem, but soak into the feeling. And that's what the picture will help you and also purposely I kept only one poem in one page so that you don't move on so this is <laughs> this is not a book to be read in one day no please don't do that you need to soak into the emotion look into the picture 
read it how you receive it. So that's the message for you. And the one that resonates the most is also I feel that you need to focus on that. That's something that is deep down that wants to come out as well. That, that's a direction that you need in your life to move on or like whatever. Mm. I believe in these things. Uh, and it has really helped me uh, as well. So I, I wanted to give my readers a very a powerful experience, uh, but also use these methods to make it even more empowering for my readers. Yeah, what, what I really like about your book is that there, I don't know, if you go just through the poems, you know, there is so much deeper meaning behind, behind all of them. Um, even if you read it and you're like, okay, wow, there's so much awareness behind it that you can relate to yourself. And that is really inspiring and empowering, as you also say it in the book. And it also makes you think of the deeper reason of why we are here and what we are here to do, uh, how you can more align with who you are and what your purpose is and so on. Um, and I think it's also very cool that you actually used your own book to find your creative expression and just publish it, go for it. Uh, beside the fact that where, or despite the fact where you have gone through, you know, through your depression and so on, and feeling very vulnerable to to write those poems out yeah. and actually publish them in a book, and I think it's it's incredible, and you can feel that you know that that energy that is there of that creative expression that wants to come out. I think it's very cool, and I would invite you. I would love to invite you to tell me like one of the poems that you have that you really really like and. Perhaps you can share one now <laughs> with us. That would be really cool. Um, yeah, I can, like, there are 111, so I'm going to pick up uh, one of the poems. Um, it's called The Golden Path. And I think this poem totally resonates uh, with your podcast, Dream Builders. And I know that it's one of your favorite poems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a coincidence. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but it's also one of my favorites. Uh, it's uh, one that I always read and I, I wrote it uh, when I always feel uh, down. That's when I feel the most creative as well. And that's when I have this somehow the self-motivation technique and through poems. So this is what I read, uh, I think around uh, one and a half years back I have written this. And the poem name is called Golden Path. To be on your path is the path of joy. To know your path is part of the journey. You will find yourself blocking your path and that's how you will discover it. Staying away won't be an option once you've tasted the joy of it. Doesn't mean the path is smooth. It's your unfolding. Enjoy every bit of it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's so good because I can totally resonate it because most times we are all on our path and sometimes that path is actually blocking us or in whatever way that, that comes in as a struggle. But it also makes you having sometimes like a wake up call, whether you need to change direction or so. And then if you come more in, a, in alignment with yourself, you can automatically feel that, okay, I get actually more fulfillment on this path or I get actually more satisfaction from it or much more enjoyment. So I yeah, totally, totally align with that. Thank you. Uh, I really wanted to add like, what you're doing is really courageous, really daring, like not, all people can do it but because you know that there is so much of fulfillment once you get into the path that's why you dare to do what you are doing and that's the calling so like for us like to find purpose in life to find uh, the calling in life that's not the most easiest skill that you have it's actually one of the most uh, challenging skill but the one that you enjoy the most as well so that's what we all need to discover in ourselves for me for example speaking I knew that from all my technical presentations I loved it I loved it but mm -hmm. then I never knew that okay what am I going to do I have all these ideas but how I'm going to speak it out it's no it's, it's not my thing but then 
going through the depression or the down times, I realized that no, 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 no. I need to work on it because that's where my true happiness lies. To do these, to do these kind of things, so daring and talking in front of you guys about my vulnerable emotions. It's like super close to me. And I get to do that. <laughs> How do you, I am very interested because you have been in a situation where you're down, right? Or, or feeling kind of depressed and then you have the courage actually to, to write it down. But then there's another step of courage where you open up to, to the public. Yeah. How does that feel to you? How, how does that process work where you just tell yourself like, okay, I'm just going for it. How did you do that? Can you, can you tell me something about it? Yeah, uh, like I mentioned when I started, I started writing almost five years back, but uh, only until last year I actually dared. I used to uh, post some of my work in my social media, but it's not same as, you know, reading or mm. like making it like super public. Uh, it was only for my own, like people who are in my network and it was like, you know, people were reading it as like one of my hobbies, but I know that how intimate it was that was already one there for me to share uh, but also something i realized that it's uh, it's again a calling a purpose in life is also to share your vulnerability because one of my also purpose is to inspire people to be vulnerable and only way i can inspire people to be vulnerable is to be vulnerable myself right yes. to be a role model uh, i i believe in uh, leading by example so if I am not true to myself, how, how can I tell you you're come to be true to yourself? And that, um, that motivated me to actually uh, get up and, um, and listen to my purpose. I took some time. It took like in between four or five years to process all these things mm -hmm. because first of all, I have to process my own feelings, my own emotions, and I'm still going through it. But now I'm in a position where I know that it's also time to take the next step to listen to my next calling, just not express the vulnerable, like get my emotions flowing through expressions, through creative work but also to encourage people like who are listening to us to get their emotions also flowing because being vulnerable will actually help you to create better bondings with yourself, with others, for the world, for the humanity. That's the way to, that's the place to go. Uh, that's where the next level of jobs will lie through human connection. And that's what, uh, like, um, my purpose in life is to make you feel vulnerable because I dare to. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so powerful. I love it. I really love it that you just step up for yourself and just start doing it also for others that you serve it out. And I really admire that in you. But, and you are so multi-talented with all the things that you do. It, it's so cool. You're empowering and inspiring people in various ways to, to become more self-aware. That's really, really what I what I appreciate and and loving you. And before we wrap up this this conversation, I would love to to ask you if there's anything else that you would like to share from your heart. Yes. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you, Joachim, for giving me this platform to be vulnerable <laughs> and to share my experiences and. Um, give me this opportunity to uh, share my own personal story. Um, and also what I would like to, um, one, one single message from this whole story or whatever, like um, I would say is to uh, like to challenge yourself by learning. It's not like, you need to do this 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 like like what i mentioned the society will tell you a lot of things to do and will expect you to behave in a certain way mm -hmm. but for you to find your purpose your calling you need to keep on learning all your life and once you I, as i mentioned in my poem once you taste the joy of it things will follow but keep learning keep exploring keep uh, yourself open to doing new things uh, going in new environments, uh, challenge. Once you have reached one level, try to 
keep on learning, be a learner for life. Be, be committed to be a better person for life. And that's how you will contribute to this world. That's my, that's my main message, I would say. Wow, I love it. Thank you so much for this, for this conversation, Sudanya. Um, I really, really enjoyed it and I appreciate it. And I want all the listeners to know that, you know, I don't even know, but go and grab this book. <laughs> Not from my soul by Sudanya. It's super empowering. I love it. So go and grab it. I will put the link in the comments below. Um, one last thing, Sudanya, where can people actually find you? Yeah, so I am there in uh, multiple, like the usual suspected social media platforms. So in LinkedIn, I am by the name Sudhanya Space Malik. Mm -hmm. It's not as a word, but Sudhanya Malik. <laughs> and um, I am also with the same name on uh, Facebook. On Facebook, there is also a page that you can follow, which is the same as the book name, Knocks From My Soul. So that's the other place. And also I am there on Instagram. And in Instagram, my handle is called at rates Sudhanya 2.0. At rates Sudhanya 2.0. So these are all the social media handles where you can reach me. Uh, and also if you're interested in the emotional intelligence course uh, as well, or um, like any of like uh, help or uh, suggestions on this topic about vulnerability or poems or stuff like that. Uh, you can also email me. Uh, my email address is reach.sudhanya at gmail.com. So that's where <laughs> I am reachable. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm seriously very much looking forward to what you're going to do in the future i'm going to follow your work because i like it very much um we I will be working together <laughs> i'm very sure about it <laughs> sure okay i want all the listeners to to thank you all for listening and to wrap up we're going to wrap up in a different way i would love sudanya if you could do the outro with one of your favorite poems just to round up that would be awesome thank you Great. Thank you so much. Poem name, Becoming. There is no goal to achieve other than being becoming. It's the past that presents the future. The dreams to grow are reckoning. Let the past not be cause to slow down your becoming. It has served to cause a desire. Let it go summoning. Build a dream with good thoughts to speed up your becoming. Let appreciation be the key to create a future far more stunning. Thank you. <laughs>